Hello lovely entrepreneur, it's Tash Corbin here and today's video is a little bit outside the square for me. So as you might know, I generally teach online marketing and strategy for women in business. But today what I want to talk about is a different business model for generating leads in your business and it's particularly a fabulous one if you love yourself some face-to-face -face time with your target market and your audience and if you love teaching and delivering workshops. So stay tuned if that's something that sounds like it's right up your alley. Okay, so just to sort of set the scene on why this might be a bit out of the box for something that Tash is teaching, normally in my startup programs, when I'm working with my VIPs, when I talk about the kind of first building of a sales funnel, we have at the very top your reach, so things like social media, your website, all the things where people can find you for free. And then we have your opt-in, which is something that grabs people onto your mailing list and then you send them newsletters and you stay in touch with them, you make them offers and then you have an entry level product and then you might have other products that are more intermediate, advanced, signature programs, whatever it might be. So the funnel kind of works in that way where you're grabbing people online and then you're just refining, getting down to the people who actually want to buy from you and then they might purchase. Now, all of this is normally done online through things like webinars, lead magnets, all those sorts of things you might have heard me talk about. But today, I wanna to talk to those of you who really dig the in-person stuff and love delivering things like live workshops or running networking events because there is a way for you to take your offline capabilities and use them to your advantage in building your online business. Now, this is a model that was implemented by plenty of well-known entrepreneurs around Australia. The first one that comes to mind for me is the fabulous Denise Duffield Thomas. Now, Denise uh, lives in Newcastle in Australia and she's very open that when she first started her business, she would run free workshops wherever anyone would have her. Yoga studios, at the library, she would go to Chamber of Commerce meetings, whatever organization would love a free speaker to come and present a workshop. I think she did a goal setting workshop was her kind of standard thing that she rolled out. She would go and do that workshop and then that would create an opportunity for her to talk to people about working with her. So she could do an offer, get them onto her mailing list, get them into working with her, doing a discovery call, whatever it might be. And this is a very savvy business model. And particularly if dealing with people face-to-face -face is a strength of yours, if you love running workshops, then the workshop or the face-to-face -face model can be really effective. Now, there are some things that you need to understand about the workshop model, and that's why I'm doing this particular video blog for you. So if you're interested in using live events as part of your sales funnel, number one, you need to know where in the sales funnel does this fit? There's a big difference between doing a free workshop to generate leads onto your mailing list and doing a paid workshop as an entry level into your business. If you're doing workshops as a paid workshop, as an entry level kind of product in your business, then you still need sales funnel stuff on top of it. You still need to be expanding your reach online. Now that might be geographical. You might be trying to expand your reach in your local region or area, but you still need to be online and finding those people. So you could run your workshop if you're charging for it and use things like Facebook events and Facebook advertising to put lead magnets out there, offer freebies, and actually advertise that event in your geographical area. So that's a little bit different to using the workshop as the opt-in itself, as a way of actually starting to build the top of your funnel. So if you're wanting to run free workshops as a way of getting people onto your mailing list and making an offer for them to work with you, then it's slightly different. So as Denise did, you can go out and actually offer this workshop as a service 
out to other organizations. Lots of health food stores love having people coming and doing presentations in the evenings. There are co-working spaces. There are um, other networking events, all sorts of things where they are creating an opportunity for you to come and present and pitch yourself as an expert in a particular area. So there's lots of ways for you to explore being asked to be a speaker or going and pitching yourself as a speaker. You still need to do the work though, right? It's not just like you can put it up on Facebook that you do free workshops and all of a sudden you're fully booked. You kind of need to pound the pavement a little bit. You need to get creative about what kinds of organizations and locations would be cool or looking for someone to run a workshop of that nature. And you need to be kind of upfront enough to be able to go and offer your services to them. It's not a passive strategy by any means. The other type of live event that I wanted to talk about is networking events. So we have people in the Heart Centered Soul Driven Entrepreneurs Group, for example, who run free Lady Posse meetups. Now, a lot of them happen in Australia. There are some that happen overseas as well. But the organizers of these events can use this as an opportunity to pitch themselves as a leader in that particular space. And you can do this with networking events as well. So you might decide that you want to run a free or low cost networking event, particularly if you serve people in a specific niche. So for example, if you serve women in business, then running a women in business networking event could be a very juicy idea for you because that's your target market. If you work with health professionals, running events for health professionals can be very effective in helping create that sales funnel for you. So you can see where I'm going with this. But there are lots of ways that you can use the offline world to draw people into your online community. The one thing I will say is if you do run these in-person events, make sure you're getting your return on investment. So if you run a $25 workshop and you have 10 people show up, $250 for you to organize, market, then facilitate and then follow up on that workshop is not a good return on investment. In order for that actually to make sense, you wanna make sure all of those people are on your mailing list, you're pitching something to them and having conversations with people about what the next step is to work with you and you're following up on a personal level to really connect in with the people who attended so that they can remember that you've got this service that they may be interested in. If you're running the free networking events, if you're running a meetup group or any of those types of things, please make sure that you do ensure that people are going onto your mailing list and that they know they're going to go onto your mailing list and where possible, continue the relationship with them. Follow up emails, reminders, giving them extra freebies are all ways to develop that relationship with a high upfront value proposition. So consider the ways that you can use those offline events First of all, to create some exposure for yourself, and then secondly, to actually create return on investment by moving them into your online business. The last thing that I wanna say about the workshop and networking events model is just because you met offline doesn't mean you need to keep working offline. This is a big difference when it comes to working for me. So I love doing our face-to-face sessions with people but they do have an extra cost for me. So if I'm gonna be working with someone face-to-face, generally we go over time, generally we grab a coffee before or after, generally I have to travel somewhere or someone needs to arrive and then I need to try and get them out of the house. And so working with me in person actually costs more than working with me via the online channels. Because if I'm working with you online and we have an hour coaching session, I can have a 15 minute break and then roll into the next thing without it feeling like, oh, I can't have it that close because what if we go over time or what if we decide to go for a coffee? The things that normally happen when I work with people face to face. Look, I'm an extrovert. I just am absorbing all the energy of the other person on the other side of the table. So for me, whilst it's great energetically, it's not great in terms of my me respecting my time and my business and 
some of those boundaries. So I just make it a little bit more. And it is perfectly okay for you to charge more for people to work with you in the offline sense. So if they want to work with you face to face, if they want to work at a coffee shop, if they want you to come to their house, then it's perfectly reasonable for you to charge more for that service. So don't feel that just because you met them face to face and just because you live in the same town as that person, don't feel obligated that you need to work with everyone face to face because for a lot of people, that's what happens and I see them burn out. So maybe when you talk to people about the next ways that they can work with you, let them know the online sessions when we do it via Zoom or via Skype, is this much if you want to do it face to face there is a premium price for that that's my VIP service let me know if you'd like to know those prices as well so it's a really nice way for you to kind of establish that boundary and just say you know what I would prefer for us to work online particularly when you're in startup and you're on that kind of on the go and you've got you want to roll from one thing to the next sometimes working offline isn't the best way to go all right Whew, that feels like it was a really big one, but I wanted to talk about it because I do think it's a valid business model, particularly where you thrive in that environment, but it does have its own special requirements and things that you need to be aware of moving forward. If you are thinking about incorporating this as part of your business model, what I would like to invite you to do is to check out my sales funnel toolkit. Now it's in the Lady Posse library. So if you go to tashcorbin.com forward slash library, it's in the toolkit section. There is a beautiful little one pager where you can map out your sales funnel and ensure that you're really clear on how it fits into that process. It's really simple and easy for you to do. So go to tashcorbin.com forward slash library to check it out. And if you have any questions or you want to join the conversation, then come and join us in the heart centered soul driven entrepreneurs Facebook. Facebook group. You can find us at tashcorbin.com forward slash group. Nice and easy to remember that one. And until next time, I've been Tash Corbin. You've been a fabulous viewer and I cannot wait to see you shine. Mwah! Big buys and love from me.